The following is a fan-based discussion. All properties discussed are property of Toei Inc., Bandai, Hasbro, and Subarai Productions. There's no joy to be had here today. <laughs> Welcome to the Tokugast again, everybody. <laughs> Episode 75. Hello, but before we get started, um, there is a special shout-out I would like to make. Oh? And that is to one of our dearest... Uh, Fans and supporters, Mrs. Allison Kitowski. She's getting married today. Congrats. Today of recording? Today of recording. Congratulations, ma'am. So congratulations to you, Allison. Yes. And to your husband as well. Hope it all hope it all has a hope you have a wonderful wedding and thank you for all your support through the years. Have fun, guys. Anyway. Okay, back to this nonsense. Ultraman <laughs> RV. <laughs> Let's immediately go back to being sad. This is the most recent or Ultraman, Ultraman. or Ultraman Rube. Yeah, I guess this that, is... that's another thing. We thought it was Geed for a long time. It's Geed. Yep. We thought it was RV. It's Rube. But RV, as it's located on the actual thing. Mm. But yeah, Ultraman RV, the most recent Ultraman that just ended. Uh, Upcoming is Ultraman Taiga, uh, so that'll we'll be doing that eventually. Taiga son of Tiga. <laughs> yes, so oh, that that'll be confusing later. Um, <laughs> well, son of what? Son of uh, Taro. Taro, right? <laughs> but yeah, this show. Let's start where we usually do the, with op- the opening. The opening. It's okay. I don't mind it. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, I think it's perfectly. Fine. I, I think it gets better once the chorus hits. Yeah, this because the chorus is pretty darn good. Yeah. It was alright, though. I didn't see anything, you know, specifically wrong with it. Um, I'm trying to decide how I want to do this. You thinking good, the bad, and the terror bad? Uh, sort of, but I do want to get into some things about this show. Uh, because it, this show has, a, in my opinion, a problem with setup. But let's talk Oh, about I agree with you 100%. Yeah. I agree with you 100% there's a lot of problems, especially with setup is a big one. Because this one starts with... Two people of the Minato family, two brothers. Two brothers. Uh, Katsumi and Katsumi and Isami, mm-hmm. uh, who are caught up in a rampage of the fire monster Grigio Bone. Uh, that is the first one that we see, and when they are about to get blasted by the monster after they go up mm-hmm. to it, because Isami is like totally into space and monsters and stuff like that. So he's the one who almost gets them killed, but in a flash of light, they get these two. They're transported to like the light dimension that we see where sort of it's kind of it's kind of like that where they get their device for the first time and they're in like another dimension and they grab a hold of it and it's this is like the worst it's ever been handled. Yeah, I feel like so the, suddenly. it happens so suddenly and they immediately know what to do. Yeah, immediately they're just like they see them in front of them and they're like, oh, transform, and then we get a forty-minute henching sequence, which <laughs> happens. Always. Mm-hmm. It is every episode. And it's so long. It's like watching yeah. that one part in G that we hated. And we love that show. I love that show. And it's yeah. a great show. But Zero and the Neo Crystals, yep. which they stopped doing after a little bit. They did. Because they realized it took a minute and a half. So... But it's literally that too. It's like they're padding the episode every single time. Oh my gosh, these episodes feel so padded by henching sequences and by just endless. It seems it seems like they never end. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in these in these episodes. Whether it'll be a scene of dialogue or a fight or something that just seems to drag out a lot longer than it should. Yeah, not to mention comedy and not handled well. Not at least not in most cases. It's there not. Sometimes... It's not very funny. The show, the show definitely tries to be funny, but it's not very funny. That's the problem. It tries. Yeah. You're funny when you don't have to try. That's, you know, the basis of good comedy. When it comes off as forced like this, you get something like this or go on to. I'm not going to say it's forced. I'm just going to say it just didn't work. Yeah. Like, there, there's forced comedy. There's just straight up flat comedy. There's comedy that, yeah, for, comedy For me, it was a case of it just falling flat. Yeah. It did that a lot. Like, there was one episode... That I just wasn't ready for because it subverted itself from, like, because I was expecting something like X, but we got something completely new and I was completely okay with that. Mm -hmm. But the comedy just does not work in this show a lot. Let's talk about the Ultraman themselves, though. These designs are all right. 
Not a big fan of Rosso. Mm. I don't like the hat, the hair, the helmet. You know what I mean. Yeah. I, I'm just I'm not a fan of the cat thing. And one of the characters later on mentions that. Mm. I'm, I'm just, I think they're too big. And I think that's my biggest problem with it. Yeah, I, th- I think they're both okay. They're not the greatest designs we've seen for an Ultraman, but they're not the worst either. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I wouldn't put them on the best or the worst list. I'm a much bigger fan of blues. Yeah, the blue one. I think the blue one does look better. I'll give you that. Yeah. And I like the way that the colors, although I feel like they're a little bit too sparse because it leaves this entire middle section just black and gray. There there are, but because they have to be swapped so much for form changes, mm-hmm. because the colors are constantly getting swapped, if they had to swap too much fabric yeah. for each costume, Otherwise, it, probably came down to, it probably came down to budgetary issues. Yeah. Otherwise, it's fine. Uh, Isami and Katsumi in the next in episode two. Yes, you know, Katsumi is the older brother. He helps their their family owns a clothing store. Yes, and he helps out at the store. And his brother is into space and like astrophysics and things like that. And he is working on going to school. And he's very going to college. Uh, Isami is very excited to be an Ultraman. To but be Katsumi, an Ultraman. at least at the beginning, is very he's more hesitant. Hesitant. And then we get to meet. My least favorite character in this entire show. I knew she was going to be your least favorite character as soon as she showed up. The younger sister. The younger sister. Asahi. Whose catchphrase is, happy I immediately hated her. There was no, like, as soon as I saw her come on screen, I was just like, right. This is the reason why I didn't want to watch the show initially when it was airing. Mm -hmm. Because I knew it was going to be more comedy based as soon as I saw that this was not going to be like, um, like a military one. Even though we just came off of uh, Dinah. Or, or it wasn't going to be something like more agency based like Jeeves was. Mm. But as soon as I saw her and the dad, I was just like, I am not going to enjoy this. <laughs> um, I didn't mind Asahi that much, but... I felt like they played her a little too young for what she for what her age is supposed to be. She's supposed to be seventeen. Is she? Yes. What? She is supposed to be seventeen. Are she's, you sure? Yeah, she's in, yeah. She's in high school. Later years of high school. She's supposed to be seventeen, but she plays it like she's fourteen or younger, or or may or like thirteen. She plays her like she's super into cutesy things. She's, she's like, very cutesy. She's fair. always got a bag of candy that she's always given oh, to everyone. That, that, that's a thing. I actually like that, though. I thought that was kind of a nice touch. But there is one scene in particular. It's in one of, it's in one of the late, one of the middle episodes, I believe, where it's, like, one of her friends. She has those two friends from school. One of them had a birthday. And they, they sit down in a park bench and she hands her, like, a stuffed animal. And... I felt like they were acting way too excited about this stuffed animal. Yeah. They're like, oh, it's so cute. Oh, my God. Da, 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 moe, moe, kawaii, da, sune, ha, 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 That happy. might be more of a cultural thing. It might be, but I feel, like, I feel like it was really, over, they were really overplaying it. Yeah. Yeah, they were. I um, Episode three, though, we get to meet the actual best character in the show. Mm. Eisen. Yeah. I loved him. <laughs> I, I, mm, I, didn't, I didn't... He was such a ham. He was such a ham, but he reminded me a little too much of Kogami from O's. Yeah, but He's, like taken to an extreme. <laughs> like to like a, he wasn't already at one. <laughs> like to a different extreme. This is guy different, is just... He, he's, he's Kogami, but malicious. Yeah. Well... Yeah, and and more he, hyper. He actually has evil. He actually has like malicious, somewhat malicious intentions to make himself the hero. Yeah, but the the like the twist that they did with him in like the middle of the series, where like because he's the main villain. Yeah, for the first like 12, 12, 12 or so episodes, episodes, but then they just drop him and replace him with someone who's infinitely less interesting. Yeah. And, the best and the, thing about and the Isaac, twist that they did with him wasn't very good either. Yeah, the best thing about Eyes is just like every single time he comes onto the screen, he is chewing. Oh that scene. God, he's eating this scenery up. But he's so funny, 
And I just enjoyed when he came on screen. Like after he was gone, I was just like, wow. <laughs> it's like it's like the energy just kind of yeah. flatlines. Cause because the guy brings it so much. And props to the actor. He's he's very good at it. Yeah. Uh and, and uh, he his he he is the president of Eisentech. Yes. Which uh they they're they're a tech they're a tech company. They do a lot of specific research, and he's doing research on these monsters because we later find out that he wants to make himself an Ultraman so that he can defeat the monsters and he can be the hero yeah. in turn, and so he can like use that as, as his way to like conquer everyone. In episode four, it's like it's all about this baseball team that Katsumi is on. Yeah. And he uh, his coach at the end of the episode gives him these extra crystals mm-hmm. that he used for like attacks. And things like that. There, there was one scene that, for some reason, like actually made me laugh in this episode. Um, it was when everybody was telling Katsumi that his way of training sucked, and he had that look on his face that just reminded me of Akagi from a uh, uh, Akiba Ranger. <laughs> I'm just like, oh all right. I think that's the only reason it made me laugh, just because of the fact that it reminded me of a better character. So, <laughs> <laughs> episode five, uh, minor mention. It's the girl that could fly the Feral Icarus mm-hmm. uh, episode. It's the girl that could fly. Um, and we get our first of the form change crystals in the win one. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually like this one because it's not often that we get to see purple. Yeah. So purple, Purple's nice. I'm just like, great. Th- this is great. I greatly enjoy this. Purple is great. Episode 6. I have so many problems with this episode. You just want to talk about this one and 7 because they're connected? Yeah, so when the brothers were young, a policewoman used to regularly beat them up. There's no way to skirt around it. That's what happened. It was like that, but it was also rock, the, paper, scissors. It, and I was she, like, she would play rock, paper, uh, a policewoman named Kaoru Kamaki. She like, so they were like walking around a park one day, and she says something like, this is my territory, you better get lost or I'm going to beat the crap out of you, which she does. And they're like, well, we got to beat her. And so they went back over and over again, and she repeatedly beat up two children. It's weird that they framed it like that, because it was literally just a game of rock, paper, scissors, yeah. and like make you look or something like that. Yeah. It's stupid. But I'm just like, the way they framed it was off. Yeah. So, <laughs> that, that was just I, really I did not like that policewoman character at all. And she, she was there for two episodes. She was there for two episodes. She she was just brash, annoying, obnoxious. She was she was just an annoying character. Yeah. And I'm glad they didn't dwell on her too long. Um, <laughs> episode eight. This is when we get to meet Ultra. Hold on, let me actually say his name correctly. Yeah. Ultraman Orb Dark Noir Black Schwartz. Ultraman Orb Dark. Black, black, black. 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 <laughs> Which they make fun of in show. It's so good when they do. Because they look at him and just like, isn't that just black four times over? Alright. <laughs> and he's like, no, it sounds cool. And of course, that Ultraman is Aizen. That's 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 his Ultraman persona that he has created for himself. Off of Ultraman or because mm-hmm. he basically just copied the powers. I do love when he does a transformation thing, he looks at the camera each time. And it's always at a different angle, so yeah. it always ends up being just that much funnier. Yeah. I love his overacting. It, yeah. It's like it's overacting, but at a tolerable level. Oh, of course. Because he is completely selling it. Yeah, absolutely. And he makes fun of them because, one, he thinks they talk too much while they're fighting. He <laughs> thinks there is too much comedy Coming from this guy. <laughs> and he just thinks... Last houses, buddy. He just thinks they're just doing a lot of things just wrong. Mm-hmm. And I love it. I think it's hilarious. Yeah. And eventually... Uh, so he, so they continue to... So they continue, the three of them, they're like battling it out for the next couple of episodes. Mm-hmm. And eventually... They discover, the brothers discover that it is Aizen. Yeah. Who is not only responsible for, he's the, he's Ultraman, dark, dark, dark. But he's also, um, he's the one responsible for summoning all the monsters. Yes, he's so been, far. He's been summoning all the monsters thus far. They find out that it's him, but because Aizen is such a charismatic man, and like, the people of this city love this guy. Yeah. He is, he is regularly on TV He's always talking about how he's like donating to charity and how he's making this city a better place and how his 
company is making this city like amazing and what it's doing for the world. And after a little bit, he actually... Public opinion is really on this guy's side. And after a little bit, he takes over as the main Ultraman after he beats R&B. Mm-hmm. He takes over as the main Ultraman. He starts selling out toys and stuff. And then he gets mad at this one little girl because she mispronounces his little shorts of his name. <laughs> I love uh, his pettiness. Yeah. It's great. Huh. And what was what was um Horavaros ends up yes. coming in and beat the crap out of all three of them. Mm-hmm. Through the Oh my god. When he, that monster beats Aizen, mm-hmm. it just stabs him like straight through the stomach. stomach. Yeah. And you see him like blowing up inside the Ultraman, like in that little world of light they have. Mm-hmm. I'm sitting here like, alright, so that's how this episode is starting. Murder. Mm-hmm. Although he didn't die. But murder. Because <laughs> he basically took out, uh, or, uh, dark, 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 dark. <laughs> so, <laughs> or darker than black. Yes. That's his name now. <laughs> basically just doesn't take out him. And Horavaros is being summoned by this little girl, or rather this 17-year-old girl, more or less, mm-hmm. who is the main villain for the rest of the show. Sort of. More or less, Yeah. yeah. But um, then, but before that, we have to talk about the twist with Aizen. Turns out, this whole time he's been possessed by some Gash, pur- by a purple creature. fart cloud, pretty much. And they kill it with an air purifier. Mm. That doesn't say a lot well, for your all powerful evil being. They don't. She, the girl who yeah, the, in, uh, ends up like banishing the the monster outside of Aizen's body. And then yeah, Saki just, is her name. Yeah, Saki. Saki Mitsurugi. And then sends him like through basically just an air purifier. He's being made of gas. Yeah. So it makes sense. At the same time, it's stupid. But this, it is stupid. And to me, it devalued the character a little bit. Yeah. That this whole time, it wasn't really him. It was something that was hitherto unmentioned until now. Mm. Ugh. Not a fan. Not a fan. Not a fan because the rest of this show, although um. Around this time, because Saki ends up making friends with Asahi. Yes. And, like, after the first time they Sunni end up Chad, meeting... she likes to call her. Yeah, after the first time they end up meeting, she, like, leaves. But she leaves the Ultraman and the Ultraman Belial crystals mm-hmm. behind. And she's mad because apparently RB is her brother, like, when they're one being. Yes. It, this show has a problem with backstory. Yeah. And when to tell it. Yeah. It feels like they take way too long to ever explain how anything works. Like, the mother's been missing. Oh, yeah. In the first... I bring, they bring that up in the first episode, but they don't really get into it at all until way later in the show. Mm-hmm. And as to how... Like, who the Ultraman brothers are, like, thousands of years ago, they were fighting a monster. They came to our planet. It pretty much decimated the planet. And... Saki is their sister, hmm. and now stuff is happening, and she wants to, for some reason, destroy the world again. Well, no, it, that does need to get explained, but her first mission her was mo- to her- get her, her actual brother back, <sighs> because that's why she left behind the Ultraman and the Belial yeah. crystals. Uh, they try to use it. It doesn't work. Yeah. So she's just like, you're not worthy. I'm taking up, your stuff. Yeah, she ends up and trying to kill And then they immediately them. get it back. And they transform into Ultraman, uh, Ultraman Vru. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about him. I like it. It's it's fine. Still not a fan of these. I know. <laughs> but I think the weird, the weirdly, like the weird thing about it is just the fact that maybe it sort of had those, but they were a lot smaller. Mm-hmm. And these are just so pronounced. And the fact they're in this form, they're gold, so they're more pronounced. Especially when the rest of the helmet is just silver and with a little bit of black. I think it's it's not good. bad, though. It actually gives a crown to mm-hmm. him, mm-hmm. which I quite like. I like the black and gold as an outfit. It does strike me as a little bit plain coming off of uh, G Mega Master. Mm-hmm. But I think it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. That's all I gotta say about that. <laughs> um, so uh, uh, the dad ends up finding he goes through all these past pictures of yes, thing, and he ends up seeing that Asahi is not in any of the. She's pictures. not in any of their pictures, despite him having memories of her being there when they took them. Yeah. So uh, he's so, like, "Who are you?" Mm-hmm. 
So he's a little confused, but um, that does lead to a sweet moment, I think, when eventually he accepts, you know, doesn't matter that she's not there, she's still my daughter. Yeah. That, that was a cute moment. Yeah. Yeah. What did you think what did you think of the dad character? I think he existed. <laughs> I kinda liked him. I thought he was alright. He's he's uh he has a penchant for designing like quirky t shirts. Mm. And um when when the mom finally gets reintroduced, I can see why these two married. Speaking of which, that's the mom. That's the mom. Asian people just don't age. No. Good God. How old is Gact again? <laughs> Seven hundred at this point. Seven hundred. Freaking vampire. Freaking vampire yeah. that he is. Uh, episode like oh, this show has fillers, man. And I'm sitting here like this a, show is twenty four episodes, and it still manages to put filler in there. And that's a problem. That's amazing. Honestly, it's amazing that they managed to do that. Episode seventeen. I was about to say, are you talking about the Halloween episode? Yeah. Oh, which. Oh, it's fine as a filler, but at the same time... It, it wasn't a terrible episode, but it was so inconsequential. It, it really was. That That's the problem with these fillers. They don't have anything to do with the rest of the show. Honestly, he still exists. That's my problem. But <laughs> episode 18, though, even though this is a filler, I love this episode. You want to know why? Why is that? Because it reminds me of that one uh, news episode of X. Of X. I was thinking the same thing. And I there like the thing that tripped me out... When they were doing the interview with people, they were just, you know, interviewing people on the street on Earth, and mm-hmm. then it switches to this alien, and I was just not expecting it, <laughs> and I think that's what made me laugh. It, 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 it's a, such a bizarre out there moment, but it deals with, like, this extraterrestrial news team, mm-hmm. and uh, Saki has announced that they're going to end up blowing up the planet with a smile on her face, because keep smiling, y'all, but we're not at that show yet. So, <laughs> I was also thinking of that while I watched it, because she is, she's like, you know, keep smiling, y'all. And she's like, I'm going to blow up your planet. Ha, 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 ha. Her motivation never made any sense to me. It really didn't. But I still it like always, it, al- it always, it seemed to like change every other episode. Yeah. There was this one part in the news episode yeah. where they were just like, are we going to have to fake the footage? So they had one of the monsters like do, like transform into a giant sake and just start destroying buildings. And they go back and the director was like, what the hell was that? <laughs> <laughs> No one liked that extreme dramatization of what actually happened. <laughs> that didn't even work last time. Why'd you think it worked again? <laughs> Speaking of which, the head like director of the thing was the bad guy from Orb? Like the first one? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Why not? Just a little I like little things. Why not? I think that's legitimately funny. Mm. Um So the mom comes back. Episode 22, yeah. Ap- apropos of uh, a convenient portal. And the reason they won't, uh, that Saki wants to blow up the planet is because she was the other monster that was there with RB a thousand years yes. ago. Uh, and the big monster came down and she was like, the only way we could destroy this monster, because originally it was just a big giant gas cloud. Yeah. And then it wasn't. And so she was just like, I guess the only way we can destroy it is by throwing the earth at it and blowing it up. Mm-hmm. And they're like, don't do that. And she's like, okay. Also, so their mom, she used to work for Eisen Tech. Mm-hmm. That's, that's how he, that's how Eisen knows their family. Mm-hmm. She's the one who found their transformation devices. Yep. And then she got pulled into the other dimension somehow. I don't really remember the explanation. But the while she's there and she's wa- like she's been watching them grow up and everything happen from her dimension she's trapped in mm-hmm. the the transformation device has just left when the time was right pretty much there really there's no real reason for it for them to be the ultraman it's just not that not that they're, I mean like not, not that I'm saying there has to be it's just like it's like oh trouble here's two people that'll work here you go. Yeah. Yeah. It just feels so much less special than it did in previous shows mm-hmm. where somebody sacrificed themselves and the Ultraman shows them as their host or some or in like Jeed's case where he was the son, the son of an ult, the son of an Ultraman and a bad guy and he was using even even though he had his father's looks he was doing, you know, good doing good things. He's trying to, you know, show these people that just because I I'm, I'm not my fa- mm-hmm. I'm my father's son but I'm yeah. not my father's son. That, so, that that or something like Mebius, where they go to Earth specifically for the purpose of 
doing good deeds and helping people in the name of Ultraman. Mm-hmm. This just feels so much less special. Yeah, it feels like it. Ha- it feels like they got the devices so the show would happen. It pretty much starts off yeah. the Kinga does. Yeah, which is not a good thing. No. Uh, okay, so the monster ends up coming back. Saki originally fought uh, Rube. They lost that big monster. Ryuji Sai ends up coming back. Yep. Saki dies. No one cares. Um, Asahi. There's, there's a, the same with her and Asahi where she does die. I thought was okay ish. Yeah. Because because the, they're not bad actors. I think the acting across the board in the show is fine. I have I, one problem with that, and I will describe it at the end of it. Okay. Uh, I think it was fine. I thought her de- I thought her death scene was okay because of the relationship she had with Asahi. I thought that was pretty well established. But she dies. Um, I want to talk about Ryugisite for, for a bit. I love his design. His design is great. It's a great monster design. It really is. I, I definitely do agree with that. I think that's one of those better monster designs. I'm just like, all right, mm-hmm. this is what we're going with. Let's work with it. So, which we didn't talk about the weapons. I do want to talk about those really quickly. Okay. Uh, the RV sluggers and the coding. The coding. Um, the coding I like the most because it's very rare, rare that we get chakram. Yeah. In Togo. It's nice to see those. I do feel it's a small. Yeah. It is quite small. But it's, that could just be me. And usually when I end up thinking of Chakram, I think of axles or kid parts. But, but uh, even still, I don't like... Uh, Not necessarily a bad thing. I know. <laughs> I don't like Rosso's RV sluggers. Mm-hmm. I like Blue's. Okay. I, I just think that when they're apart, they just look too small. So... Yeah. Ryugisite is... Ryugisite. 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 Yep. Sorry, I was reading the katakana. <laughs> um, but, any, but anyway... We get it. We get another surprise last minute revelation in these fi- in this final battle. Asahi. Asahi is the human embodiment of the Makoto crystal. What is the Makoto crystal, you ask? The game. The, the show kind of fails to mention it until this moment. Pretty much. It the, just exists. Just oh, by the way, here she is. Oh, she's a crystal. Oh no, they'll use her for the finisher and the dead kill the monster. <laughs> That's pretty much how it goes. And then she's just like, "I'll always love you guys." After the whole family, the, it, we get like that. We get like that standard, like, "I'll always love you." Thank you so much for being my family. You, you know that that death scene. You've probably seen it if you've watched an anime before. So that happens, and then two minutes later, she comes back. I think the thing that not but makes two this minutes work. later, like the. Like, you're like the wrong. family is like the family has said their goodbyes. They're embracing. They miss their little sister. They're walking away, and then a light shines in the sky, and she floats down, and they all catch her. You know what? Actually, I think makes this worse. What is because the scene before it wasn't anything impactful. Hmm. When Kango came back, and this is just you know just another problem with it because we're just coming off the fours and we yeah. just did this. We just did this. That was a lot more impactful. This you just, really felt the impact of Kengo's death. Even if he came back super quickly. He did come back super quickly and without any sort of pomp or circumstance whatsoever. But this, it's immediate. Yeah. There is no... The, the characters like don't really have a chance to mourn. We don't get a chance to see how it affects them. Mm-hmm. Literally, it's, thank you for being my family. I'm dead. We're sad. You're back. In the span of two minutes. And nothing. It's just like there's no consequence for it. Oh. That's the biggest no, there's, problem. there's no consequence at all. She's gone. She's back. She's gone. Shows she's over. back. Show's over. At least when Kango passed away, even though that was also fairly quick, they had those moments to like legitimately mourn and then yes. go and beat the bad guy and then come back and... He comes back later. The Forza one was still done poorly, but this was done so much worse. Yeah, this this might be the this might be the worst character death and resurrection in that that I've ever seen. I agree. It might be the worst one I've ever seen, and, and not just Toku, but like movies, television, anything. It's just like it's hi, awful. bye, or rather, bye, hi. Let's talk about these characters really quickly. 
Let's do it. Before we get to like really final thoughts on this show. Katsumi. I thought he was fine. He was fine. He's he's the older brother. Yeah. He's he's more he's uh more responsible, mm-hmm. not as impulsive. Mm-hmm. Once again, we've seen this dynamic many times before. It's not executed the greatest in this show, but it's fine. And here's the reason why. Isami. He reminds me, because he's so monotone in his delivery a lot. Mm. He Is this the me, acting you were going to talk yeah. about? Okay. He reminds me so much of Takaharu from the Ninja. Okay. And I'm just like... <laughs> That's why I hated him. He's just, he's just so... Eh, and... Immediately, I never liked his character in this show. He, I never liked his the character. The energy is never really there for yeah. me. Yeah, it's like, I like Katsumi. I'm sitting here like, if this show was legitimately just about Katsumi being an Ultraman, mm-hmm. it would be Might better. have been better. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't hate Isami as a character, but his acting was nowhere near as good as the other one. Yeah. But like Katsumi and... is just like... That's how it is, but he's he's so responsible and so much older. Mm-hmm. It's a good, you know, coming off of G where he's a lot younger and he hasn't really come into his own. Yeah. With Katsumi, it's just like he's already sort of established. But with Isami there, and the fact that there's two Ultras, it it sort of just mitigates some a lot of the character dynamics mm-hmm. they really could have gotten from this. Because well here's the the character dynamics that they explore is I am responsible, you're you're hot headed and impulsive, I'm more cautious, you're not. Again, it's a dynamic we've seen before. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that, but they don't really do go it. into it much. Yeah. It's just that that's all you really get. Yeah. It's it's a surface level thing. It it, it is very surface There's level. Not really a lot going deeper. They had like a couple of arguments, especially early on. Yeah, but that just feels like we're brothers. And then they just kind of get over it, and then they kill the monster. But let's talk. You know what? I'm only going to talk about these. Well, we'll talk about Aizen too. Asahi. Asahi is the worst. <laughs> I didn't mind her. I hated her. I know she it's, did. it's also it doesn't help that I hate characters like her. I, I know you. That, that's the thing because when I because when I was watching the show, I was like, Marcus is gonna hate this person. Yeah. Because you really you don't like the super cutesy characters, yeah. super happy characters, uh, characters with annoying catchphrases. Happy. It's pretty much a triple threat for you. I'm just like, wow, die, and then she does, but she comes back too quickly. So <laughs> there was no joy to be had. I was like, yay. Oh. I I didn't mind her so much. I don't like her. I just I just can't. Yes, that's a personal preference of mine, but I really cannot stand characters like that because at the same time, even though they're trying to go like, oh, she doesn't really exist, I didn't care enough about this character. I mostly just wanted her gone. So you get something like that, and it just doesn't work for me. Hmm. I thought I thought the chemistry she had with the other actors was was fine. Um, her chemistry with Saki was fine. Um, the, the whole, like, giving people candy. I like that. I thought it was a cute little touch. She was okay. She died too fast. And, um, and came back to And then we have uh, Ushio and Mio, who, uh, are, who are the parents. They exist. They exist. Uh, I do, I just want to talk about one more character, and that's just Aizen. Yeah. This show was saved for me because of him. Mm-hmm. He made me an, actually enjoy the show for the 14 episodes he was there. And then he died, and I was just like, well, at least Cereza died. And I'm just like, I don't enjoy this show anymore. Mm. It became a little bit too standard, and it bored me after a bit. He was, he really was a Lex Luthor type character. Yeah. I'm going to make myself the hero, and I'm going to turn public opinion against the other heroes. Yes. Yeah. So very, very Lex Luthor esque, com- combined with um, Kogami from O's. Yeah. So it's a. Yeah, he's really cool. I quite like Maybe not cool is not the right word, but he's a good character and he's really funny. Yeah. I quite liked his character. I thought he was perfectly fine. Let's talk about the show as a whole. I didn't like it. I did not like the show. mm, I thought it was okay. I liked things about it, but on the whole, it really just didn't leave any kind of impact on me whatsoever. And it's sad because that's been the last Ultraman that we've watched. Yeah. Yeah, we end up having, you know, sort of a bar to set up to. There's Nexus, Mebius, G, Tiga. And it's like, those are the ones that we, and X. 
that we always end up setting the bar up to. And it's just like, it, you don't always have to meet that, of course. No, of course not. But... Tiga, I thought, was a show that didn't really meet that, but I still enjoyed Tiga. Yeah, Tiga's a good show. It's a good show. But it's, there's just something about watching this show and missing a lot of elements that makes it Ultraman. These, for me, are the hardest show, the kinds of shows to review. If it's a show that we really love, it's, it's easy to review because we yeah. can just gush about all the things that we like. If it's a show that we really hate... It's easy to just rant about the things that we hated. Just the, sh- the shows that are just like Rube, or what's a, what's another example of, of of one like this? Some some of the Garos, I feel, mm. where the, it's it's just like a string of cardboard boxes bouncing off your head. Yeah, it's just kind of it doesn't. It's it's a little anno- it's like yeah, it's a little annoying. It gives you something to talk about, but it leaves so little of an impact. And see, it leaves so much to be desired. Yeah. And what were you saying, tra- traits from other shows that you feel this didn't have? It, it feels like it's just missing a lot of the things that makes Ultraman Ultraman. Mm. Like, with Orb, they had the SSP, and even though I hated them, <laughs> yeah. there was, they, you know, was sort of that team. I feel like Ultraman always ends up needing sort of a team somewhere in the mix, and they don't have that here. Mm. With the whole thing just being centered on this family... I'm just like, if I don't like this family, Mm -hmm. there is nothing keeping me along with this show. And plot twist, I didn't like the family. Mm -hmm. So I'm just sitting here, like, not miserable, but just sort of blah throughout watching this thing. And there was nothing really keeping me truly excited about watching it except for Aizen. Mm -hmm. And once he was gone, I'm sitting here like, wow, this is now a trial and tribulation that I had to get through. Now, that is, yes, personal taste. But at the same time, it's just, this show wasn't that strong, especially coming off of something like Jeet. Oh, yes. <laughs> which we loved. That movie was amazing. That movie was amazing, <laughs> and so was the show. Yeah, so I'm just sitting here like, wow, this is what you're coming off of. And it feels like such a step back. It right feels now. like a real big step back. And I mentioned, I was touching upon this earlier. One of the things that I feel like is missing the most is a sense of purpose. Yeah. Like why why are we do why are we here why are we doing this why are our characters caught up in all these events Yep For Jeed it was it was a part of his past that he couldn't really escape that eventually he had to accept and decided to change and make his own mm-hmm. You look at Orb he he was you know he was a happy go lucky monster hunter from the start and but he well, had his you had juggles there you had Juggles, and you had that. That, that. That's the real thing that you take away from Orb is is Orb and Juggles, and the way they their and their antagonistic relationship mm-hmm. was the driving force of that show, and it really worked. Yeah, that was the best thing about that show. You look at something like X, and it was him and his, you had X and his relationship with the Ultraman, and how he related to him as a host. And yeah, he, that's a big thing. And how he dealt with his double life as an Ultraman and also as a member of the uh, military unit and his relationships with all his teammates. And you look... You, you look at RB. You look at this. You look at Rube. And there's really nothing there. It's, it's It feels like everything happens so they could make an Ultraman show. That is accurate as hell. Mm-hmm. That is extremely the reason high that, five. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Why do we get our transformations? Because if they didn't, the show wouldn't happen. Why? This feels more like a tour commercial than almost any other Ultraman I've watched. Except for Ginga. But <laughs> That's the thing. We, we get a lot of forms. You want to talk about toy commercial every time they transform. It's Because so they different. transform with these... Um, Things that they have to like pull, and it's like three it, times they have to do it three times, and it has to be like pull, pull, pull with the camera like zooming in and showing you all all the things. Like the only thing that is missing is like now available at your local toy store. Sent crystal, and it, they had every single time that wasn't them having to choose their crystal, mm-hmm. yeah, and then set crystal, and then, set and then crystal. pull crystal, and then rise crystal, and I'm just like, oh, how about boy. crystal die? How about not? How, can we get some crystal light? <laughs> so we don't have to deal with this every single time? Ugh. That's a product placement. I never thought I would end up doing. But, <laughs> but it works. Yeah. <laughs> just, it, oh, God. This show is just, eh. And it left me with nothing except wanting it to be over. 
this show feels a lot longer than it is. Yeah. It's it all, really it's, does. It's only 24 episodes. It's Not counting the recap. Yet. Not counting the recap episodes, but it feels so much longer. It feels a lot longer. And I'm just like, I really hope, because I'm going to try to watch Tyga while it's airing, mm-hmm. but I really hope that Tyga does it better because we're going back to the military-esque nature of the show as a whole. So mm-hmm. I'm sitting here like, I hope we end up getting something a little bit more interesting there. Mm-hmm. And I also hope, this is something that you brought up with X, since they had a relationship, we never got that with RB. Nope. And of course, we weren't going to get that with Orb and G because they are the Ultraman at the end mm-hmm. of the day. But I really hope with Taiga being like three Ultramen in one, mm-hmm. that we actually get conversations with these Ultras. That would be great. And his dad is Taro. I feel like this has a lot to just expand on. Mm-hmm. So I really hope that it just ends up having a better narrative and, you know, just relationship-wise, because we didn't really get that in this show. Mm-hmm. Next time, we'll be doing Girl Season 5. Right. That's the one where decade is decade, but not decade. <laughs> so... The artist formerly known as Decade. Yeah, let us know what you think of Girl Season 5 in the comments below. Hopefully we get people to watch it. Watch the show. Also, speaking of which, uh, Girl Season 6 is now officially a thing. Raga is coming back. Oh, is he? Yes. So I'm quite excited to see what they're going to do next. But yeah, let us know what you think of Girl Season 5 in the comments below and what you think of RB. And we will see you in two weeks with that review. Episode 76. I'm putting it here so I don't forget next time. Bye, everybody. Bye. Don't forget to join us in all the things.